We live in a world that is constantly changing, moving, asking questions. Questions that demand innovation, compassion, vision. Now more than ever, the world needs leaders who can bring clarity to the complex. We need educators to equip and mentor, healthcare workers to care and heal, business leaders to grow and develop, pastors to teach and counsel. The world needs a leader like you. Since 1871, Bethel University has been a place where people have come to discover and pursue their calling in life. No matter where you are or where you're going, Bethel will help you unlock your potential and gain the skills, support, and experiences you need to launch into what's next. At Bethel, you'll experience a supportive community of peers, foster meaningful connections, and a valuable network. Faculty who are leading researchers and practicing professionals each of them invested in your success. You'll have access to the services that will help you thrive, so our flexible courses will fit your busy life. A faith-based approach in your classes, modeling how your own values and beliefs can influence your career. Across all programs, our students are full-time professionals, family members, and community leaders. The world needs a leader like you. We'd love to connect with you about how Bethel can help you take the next step in your journey.
I came to Bethel just to play football, but I found so much more. Whether it's on the field, in class, or working in our build program, I found a community where who I am and who I am becoming matter. These students have become lifelong friends of mine. They've had such an impact on me that now I'm getting my master's in special education. Bethel is a place where you can belong and become. Fifty. 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 Fifty thousand. Fifty thousand stories. Since 1871, Bethel University has prepared over 50,000 graduates to address the world's challenges, no matter the field. And while each of our stories is unique, there's a common thread that ties us together as one. It's this story, the Bethel story, that bonds us together, creates space for our growth, and propels our lives and careers forward. 
At Bethel, we belong and become. We belong. 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 And become. And become. And become. At Bethel, we belong and become. Empowered by a Christ-guided community, creating lifelong friendships with roommates, classmates, teammates, and bandmates. Transformational academics, led by expert faculty who know us by name and see us as whole people. We help students discover their purpose and pursue their callings to meet the world's needs. Wherever you find a Bethel alumni, you'll find a servant-hearted leader who's helping everyone become more of who God created them to be. At Bethel, we care about you and who you are becoming. We are on this journey together. We hope the Bethel story is a part of your story. Of finding a place to belong and a place to become.
good afternoon and welcome. You may be seated. For those of you who would like to follow along the program, we're on page 10, if you haven't found it already. We also welcome you to join us for the reception following the uh, ceremony. At Bethel University, we like to use the, the phrase belong and become because we've concluded that's what's unique about Bethel. We seek to ensure all of us belong, that we have a sense of belonging at Bethel, but most importantly, that we belong to the family of God. We also want you to become, especially graduates, but also all of us, we want them to become, yes, employed parents, of course, but most importantly, that we all recognize that we're becoming the person that God has designed us to be. Throughout this year, it's been evident God has been at work at Bethel, and we have seen that in how our students have reflected the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. So students, we're honored to celebrate today. You are what makes special, Bethel special. We are passionate about developing academically excellent and well-rounded leaders and servants. Most of all, we're passionate about helping our students know that they are loved by Jesus and to grow in their desire to love and serve him in all that you do. Families, friends, and guests, we want to recognize you. Today is a day of tremendous celebration, and we're so glad that you can be with us. Today would not be possible without your encouragement, your emotional support, and yes, your financial support, but also your prayer support. So thank you. For some, days, some families, today is an especially uh, important day. It's the first in their family for someone to uh, receive a college degree, a first generation. And so we'd like to recognize these students, and I'm going to ask that you each stand up so that we can recognize you students as first generation that will have the opportunity to change the trajectory of generations to come. So first generation students, please stand up. There's got to be some here. Thank you. Congratulations. Congrats. Congratulations. Graduating class of 2023, you made it. Congratulations. Hey, hey, yeah. We celebrate your accomplishment, certainly your achievement, but most of it is important as that. We celebrate the hard work, the perseverance, and the grit that it took for you to get here. We could not be more proud of you. We are proud of your achievements, certainly. But we're also, and just as importantly, proud of the person that you have become and the person that you are becoming. You developed meaningful, caring, encouraging relationships, relationships that will last a lifetime. You learned under the counsel and education of incredible faculty. Some of them will be mentors and friends throughout your life and your career. You grew and were shaped in the classroom, in the labs, on the athletic stage, and on this stage, you were shaped during rehearsal space time, chapel, residence hall, and professor and staff's offices. You were shaped during your time here, and now God has great things in store for you. Certainly life will bring its ups and downs as it has, has while you've been here. But you can be assured, as God has been with you here, he will be with you as you go forward. He will also bring you exciting, wonderful things things that I'm sure are beyond your wildest dreams and expectations. And so graduates, I now charge you to go out into the world with boldness, confidence, and unwavering trust in the God who will be with you always. Congratulations, Bethel University, class of 2023. Good afternoon, graduates and families and friends. Been a while since I've done one of these. So. Sitting on this platform behind me in graduation ceremonies over the years, I have occasionally pondered the question of what a group of faculty might be called in the tradition of how we say that a bunch of fish is called a school or a group of elephants is called a parade. When I was asked to speak today, I decided to research the topic but it seems that there's no official definition that I could find, uh, which seems a shame. So I decided to take a shot, and we'll see where this goes. <laughs> um, 
A group of penguins is called a huddle. Um, with all the black up here, I thought that's a phrase that might work. A group of wombats is called a wisdom. That seems a little pretentious, but it had some possibilities. But having spent a lot of time in committees this past year, I finally settled on the term complication. <laughs> I think that any group with three or more faculty together should be called a complication of faculty. <laughs> you can verify that one yourself later by meeting a few of us at the reception. So, so graduates, let me begin by saying congratulations, and I mean that sincerely. Earning a degree is a big achievement, whatever the circumstances, and to do so with the difficulties of the last few years is a greater achievement still. So nicely done. Take this success with you and remember it in the future when you once again face challenging times. The entire complication of faculty, uh, along with the staff and administration of Bethel University is very proud of you and this accomplish, accomplishment, and no doubt your family and friends are as well. Hopefully you can take some time over the next few days and weeks to reflect on who you were when you first arrived at Welcome Week and who you are now as you leave campus with your degree. I would like to offer a few thoughts about that journey, if I might, and they are brief thoughts. There is an old joke about academics like myself that we are people who study more and more about less and less until finally we know everything about nothing. We have asked you to do some of that this, these last few years, to study more and more about less. And this way of studying gets a bit of a bad rap sometimes. But a funny thing happens when a person slows down and investigates a subject in this way. And that is that we, we, begin to see, we begin to learn to see the world in ways that we were not able to see before. We learn not just knowledge, but ways of acquiring knowledge. One of the biggest barriers in learning to see what we think we know one of, excuse me, one of the biggest barriers in learning to see is what we think we know. In my field, the field of art, um, the hard part in learning to draw, as an example, is putting aside what your head is telling you and actually look at what your eyes are saying, rather, which is rather uh, a lot harder than it sounds. Knowing an apple is red will not help you draw it. In a very real sense, our preconceptions about what we think we see become a barrier to actually seeing and understanding. So you have to learn how to forget what you think you know. You have to create space for a new way of seeing. And as we slow down and learn to see in these new ways, another funny thing happens. We begin to find God in unexpected places. Or perhaps it is more accurate to say that God shows up and reveals God's self in new ways. While we are in the studio, we see God in the richness and depths in the dozens of colors on that apple we've been trying to draw, colors that a week earlier we had absolutely no idea were there. As we study field biology, we see God in the interdependent relationships within a group of plants on a forest floor. In a journalism class, we see God in the face of a Guatemalan immigrant that is being interviewed, a person who has somehow re remained loving and generous in the face of unbelievable poverty and hardship. We see God in the beauty of a photograph in a physics lab capturing a few microseconds of a shock wave. We see God reflected in the imagination and symbolism in the books of Lu of Louise Erdrich and other writers. We see God in the face of a person going through a crisis in a counseling session, knowing that their pain and anguish can be transformed. It is one of the great joys for us teachers to watch you change during your time here. And you have done that in many ways, one of which will be evident shortly when we hand you your degrees. And while the papers and research and projects you were assigned were important and will be important moving forward in your life, they are only part of this experience. The truth is that the best part of your learning, the part where you begin to see God in your studies, is out of our hands. All we can do is point at it. In that part of your education, God does the heavy lifting. But we can be confident that when we seek to really see, God will show up. That's kind of God's thing. It's our job to simply pay attention. So again, graduates, congratulations. Very well done. We wish you the best and hope for you that you, and hope that you take the best parts of your experience here at Bethel with you into the future. So please rise for the prayer of invocation. And gentlemen, please remove your caps. 
Maker God, we thank you today for this celebration and that you are present in this place and at this moment and that you celebrate with us, not because we are good, but because you are good and you love a celebration. We thank you for these graduates and the forms of holy work and holy play they have participated in here at Bethel these last few years in the lecture halls and athletic fields and labs and studios. We thank you for their dedication and resolve and ask that you would allow them to remember the ways in which you revealed yourself to them in these moments, sometimes speaking plainly and directly and other times hiding within mysteries that we must take with us to ponder. We thank you for sustaining us through difficult seasons. We ask that you continue to heal those whose lives and health and livelihoods were impacted by the pandemic and other disruptions. And as these graduates move into careers and relationships in the next part of their lives, continue to fill them with moments of insight and wonder. Give them courage and wisdom to face both the individual challenges ahead, as well as the collective challenges that face our nation and our world. Remind them of the joy that is found in rejecting values that would reduce ourselves and others to a function or a job or means to an end. And help us all to be diligent in our collective responsibility to work on repairing our world. We hold these graduates up to you now, remembering the promise described by Julian of Norwich, that you may make all things well, that you can make all things well, that you will make all things well, that you shall make all things well, and that we shall see for ourselves that all manner of things shall be well. Amen. You may be seated. Good afternoon. Today, as we celebrate a major life achievement for the class of 2023, we also take a few minutes to recognize and give thanks for faculty who are also at a transition point following long faithful careers at Bethel University by recognizing them as professors emeriti. Will the newly named professors emeriti please join me at the podium? Bethel University is a place centered on Jesus, a place that aspires to live up to its name Bethel, the house of God, a place that leads students in joyful learning about God's world, God's people, and their own particular callings as his children. As provost, I'm honored to serve a faculty who, to a person, strives to live that out in their daily work. And it's a joy to briefly introduce these two colleagues to you and honor them for their work and, by extension, the work of all of our professors. Brent Adams. Theater Arts, joined Bethel in 1999. He is a consummate educator and practitioner of his discipline while staying true to his calling as a follower of Jesus. He demonstrates his versatility of skills as an actor, director, producer, and playwright. In all his work, he follows the model of Jesus as a servant leader and storyteller. He truly cares for his flock, be it a cast, a class or an audience, because to him, the process of acting is a sacred act of worship. And Dr. Jonathan Vinker returned to his alma mater in 1988 and has served as chair of music for more than 20 years, which definitely testifies to his dedication, persistence, and patience. Dr. Vinker annually contributed his own arrangements and compositions to our Festival of Christmas and those processionals that invited the audience to enter into the adoration of our incarnate Lord have been a hallmark of each festival. Please join me in thanking these professors and in praising our Lord for their excellence, their impact, their love for God and his people in their work at Bethel University. In the first FaceTime call that I made to my mother back home in Michigan during my freshman year, 
I was wearing a t-shirt that Bethel had given out to incoming students. I imagine that some of you might know the shirt that I'm talking about or have it hanging up in your closet, but allow me to describe it. It's blue, and written across the chest in white lettering is the word home. However, the O has been replaced with the outline of the state of Minnesota. I was naive, and I failed to anticipate the reaction that this shirt would elicit from my mother, who was nine hours away and experiencing her first week of empty nest syndrome. <laughs> and we both laughed, uh, but I believe her exact words were, take that shirt off, I don't like it, that's not your home. <laughs> and while her comments in this FaceTime were probably 50% joke and 50% truth, I think that the question implied is one that we've probably all asked ourselves at some point on our journey. Is this my home? Or more specifically, is this where God has called me to be? Maybe you haven't asked these questions directly, but I would wager that everyone here has felt a feeling of uncertainty over the past four years. Should you go to Bethel? Should you join that team or club? Who should you spend your time with? How is COVID-19 going to change your life? What major should you pick? Will that major set you up for the career that you want? And what even is the career that you want? In my personal experience, the three biggest questions or decisions over the past four to five years have been, one, the decision to attend Bethel University, two, the decision to major in history and social studies education, and three, the decision to spend a semester abroad teaching in Jakarta, Indonesia. In each of these decisions, I felt that strong sense of uncertainty. Ultimately, the truth is that in the moment, none of these decisions were made because I felt called by God in any particular direction. I made them all based on what I thought was my own evaluation of the facts or options in front of me. But in taking time to reflect on these choices that I made, I realized that it's naive to think that any of these decisions were my own. I can see now that God gave me the right information and connected me to the right people in order that I could arrive at the right decision. At this point in all of our lives, we are currently facing many more of these hard questions and decisions. I know for me, that feeling of uncertainty is at an all-time high. This feeling of uncertainty and what feels like a lack of clear direction in my life is what had led me to begin thinking about the word calling in a different way. I always thought of receiving a calling from God as a rather simple and direct interchange. God leads you and speaks to you in such a way that you have no doubt what you should do next. And I do want to acknowledge that some of you might have felt this. If you are certain about the direction that God is leading you in your life, then by all means, follow that through to the best of your ability, using the tools that Bethel has given you along the way. However, for myself, I know that's not the case right now. And I'm sure some of you can relate to that feeling. In tracking the course of the previous major life decisions that I have made, I've begun to notice a theme about calling that breaks my original understanding and encourages me. Years ago, I heard a quote that illustrates this theme well. And before I share it, I should take a second to apologize to my history professors here. I don't know where this quote originally comes from, so there will be no proper Chicago-style citation on this one. <laughs> I don't remember the context, but I've first heard it said by my dad. The phrase is, it can be difficult to know when you are being called, but it's clear to see when you've been sent. I can see so many areas where this has rung true in my life. In none of the major decisions over the past four years that I mentioned earlier did I know that I was being called in that direction. But looking back, I see the way that God put me in the situation and set me up for that decision. He sent me to Bethel to be part of this community. He sent me into my major to learn the things that I needed, and he sent me to Indonesia to have exactly the experience that I did. So, with the way that this phrase has been true in my life, it leaves me with a word of encouragement for my fellow graduates. Either right now or at some point along your journey, you might not hear a direct and specific calling from God, which will make it difficult to know what your next steps are. If that is the case, then do the following. Use your knowledge and your interests alongside those whom you trust to make the smart, reasonable, challenging, humble, and brave decision that's in front of you. Then, whatever that decision is, throw yourself into it. Work hard, keep learning, keep trying to serve others and serve God. And when that next decision comes about, repeat the process, finding both struggle and joy along the way. However, as you continue to make these informed decisions and look forward, do not forget to also look back. See the way that God was active in your journey and the places that you were sent. 
Psalm 77, verse 19, uses the metaphor of God footprints in the sand not being seen. At times, I have felt that God isn't directing me, but in hindsight, I can see that his footprints were there the whole time. Allow that to encourage you as you go out into the next chapter of your life. Congratulations to the Bethel University class of 2023. Thank you. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Josh Fanna, otherwise known as the art guy. <laughs> I would like to say hello and congrats to everyone. We made it. Uh, firstly, I would like to shout out to my mom for birthing me. I was 10 and a half pounds. <laughs> and if you're heavy enough to go bowling with, that definitely deserves a shout out. <laughs> <laughs> You have supported me, listened to my rants. You have sent me snacks through the mail when I was having a hard week. You transported art back and forth, and without you, I would not be on the stage right now. Thank you for you and Dad constantly supporting me and setting the example of what hard, hard working and the little bit of time to laugh will get you. So, story time. I was in the clay studio, and one of my friends walked by it was 6, 10 a.m., people. She, um, she was like, oh, I see you're also trying to get an early start. See, she had just arrived, and I had never left. <laughs> so I wanted to take some time and figure out what kind of student you are. Can you raise your hands if you got up early to do homework? <laughs> now. Uh, will my night owls please raise your hands? <laughs> I have been in bull situations. No shame anywhere. <laughs> um, everyone has asked me what I was going to say, and I actually hope to say very little. Now, God, I hope he speaks a lot. It's freshman year, and I was humbled by receiving a 71 from my first grade in Sculpture One, the subject that I thought I was best at. Feedback included, is this it? <laughs> you have some interesting ideas that could use some work. <laughs> it visually is lacking impact. <laughs> we, as an art class, were told that our work needed to be, that the work needed, there needed to be more of it. I remember the words, make it bigger. Now, I was kind of a big deal in high school. My ambition captured in the local newspaper and in the awards I received. But I had packed all my ambition away. I treated college like a job. I must be an intellectual, an academic. Through this mindset, I had lost my creativity. The way that I make art tends to be kind of immersive. To all, my, to all the roommates of artists, you know what I mean. For the miscellaneous dredges of current projects left on our clothes, to the missing person notice you were tempted to write. Thank you. So back to this indictment and stain on my record. I remember calling my mom, who had witnessed my consuming creativity firsthand. I know that it's silly, but I asked for her permission to go all out. She laughed and then gave me the permission and her support. With this new mindset, I went on to throw myself at the challenges and invest myself in the process. Most notable of these achievements is the, the independent class that I proposed to the very same sculpture teacher where over the course of the semester, I breathed a dragon into existence, which some of you, if you were good students, would have seen as it was displayed in the library. <laughs> I was displayed in the library. I had become a dragon in my own right. However, the limitations of this space do not allow me to breathe fire in this moment. Often I was asked how long the dragon took to create. 
The answer is a lifetime developing my ability to routinely invest way more into projects than appeared on assignments. For this reason, college was challenging for me. Not because the reading was difficult or the papers were long, I did not have the chance to do it my way, invest the time that I wanted to. Even my creative projects were cut short by the time I could invest. Many people will never see the hard work, will never see the lifetime of hard work that you do to be successful. You have to honor yourselves. You have to own that. God has given us each the ability to create. We are artists who form through the late nights and the early mornings, pouring time and energy into our respective fields. This pouring out, in my experience, places part of myself in the work. What we do and what we choose to pour ourselves into is also where we will find a part of yourself. We remember the part that was given. The act of pouring out is solidified in our minds. I have been grateful to witness some fantastic men and women, women, sorry, excuse me, who see the inner spark of students and draw it out. The Arthurian scholar that led us on a quest and made researching fun. The art profs that became mentors, role models, and friends. The honor profs and program, program that emphasized intellectual discussion across disciplines. All of you have deepened my learning experience and helped me develop the man I am today. To all the professors who have shared your knowledge, time, and passion with us, we have learned so much about life alongside your coursework. Through the challenges we have overcome. Thank you for being authentic and transparent when we come to you with questions. The role that you played in our formation has been key, and we hope to honor you with even bigger dragons in the future. Even though we may not miss waking up in the middle of the night convinced we have an assignment that needs to be turned in, this place and these people have changed our lives. This campus and these buildings have been a vessel that we have been pouring into for four years. The culture and the people have made their impressions on our hearts. Thus, a chapter of the story of our lives is now over, and now it's time to write a new one. You have permission to begin your next adventure. Remember the quote from the famous theologian Michael Scott. <laughs> you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So live all out, go big, and dream even bigger because dreams are a moment away from reality. Thank you. Good afternoon, graduates. Congratulations. Today it is my pleasure to welcome you to the Bethel University Alumni Association. Woohoo! All the alumni in the house. Uh, this network represents over 50,000 alumni who live all around this world, and members hold in common their desire to see you as alumni thrive in a world that desperately needs you. Our mission in university relations is to support your efforts in staying connected with your classmates and your professors and coaches and others who have helped make your Bethel experience special. In my work, I have the privilege of helping you stay engaged with Bethel. So if after you graduate, you haven't heard from us for a while, send us an update. Follow us on social media, attend an upcoming alumni or networking event, and don't forget to come back to campus for homecoming. In the future, when you identify ways in which you can support a former professor or coach, classmate, current student, or the mission of the university, I trust you will. You poured time, effort, talent, and as mentioned, finances into earning your Bethel degree, and I do pray that the payoff includes a lifetime of vocational satisfaction, of friendships that grow deeper over the years, and a spiritual foundation that will launch you into effective effective kingdom work, kingdom building work. Simply said, I pray that the overall value of your degree grows significantly over time. As you prepare to enter life after graduation, I have one last little homework assignment for you, but first, a quick story. A few years ago, I was at a Bethel event in which an alumnus handed me something unique. He passed over his diploma cover, just like you'll get today. And in it, his diploma was listed on one side, 
and a transcript of all of his classes, as well as a list of all of his co-curricular activities that he participated in during his years at Bethel, were listed on the other. And he said it reminded him that the relationships and experiences all defined his time at Bethel. How cool was that? So today you are going to receive this diploma cover, and later this summer you'll receive your diploma or certificate. So here's the assignment. Place your diploma or certificate in a prominent place where others will see your pride in being a Bethel grad. Then make and keep a list of the people, classes, and experiences that defined your time here. As the years go by, pay attention to how these things grow in value. I believe that you will see them grow in value exponentially over time. So parents and families, you've already been thanked, but I'll thank you again. Thank you for supporting your students throughout their years at Bethel. And graduates, we're thrilled to celebrate your graduation today. We are proud to have you represent Bethel to this world. And so on behalf of the National Alumni Association, I welcome you to the Bethel alumni family. Congratulations. President Allen, it gives me great pleasure to present to you the Bethel University Class of 2023. Will the candidates for the Certificate in Applied Studies please stand? President Allen, these students have fulfilled their post-secondary program with classes focused on independent living, employment skills, finances, health and fitness, and the Bible. I present these students for conferral of their Certificate in Applied Studies. Thank you. Students, in as much as you have successfully completed the prescribed course of study and upon recommendation of the faculty and the University, Bethel University Board of Trustees, I'm very pleased to confer upon you the certificate uh, in applied studies. You may now move your tassel on your, uh, on your uh, cap from the right to left, signifying you are the proud holder of a certificate in applied studies. Congratulations. You may now be seated. Will the candidate for the degree, degree Associate of Arts please stand? President Allen, this student has fulfilled the requirements for the degree Associate of Arts and has been approved by her departments and the Bethel University faculty. I present this student for a conferral of her degree. Thank you. Inasmuch as you have successfully completed the prescribed course, prescribed course of study and upon recommendation of the faculty and the Bethel University Board of Trustees, I am very pleased to confer upon you the degree Associate of Arts with all the rights and responsibilities of the degree. Congratulations. And now will the candidates for the degrees Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Bachelor of Music, and Bachelor of Music Education please stand. President Allen, these students have fulfilled the requirements for the degrees Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Bachelor of Music, and Bachelor of Music Education, and have been approved by their departments and the Bethel University faculty. I present them to you for conferral of the degree. Thank you. Inasmuch as you have successfully completed the prescribed course of study, and upon recommendation of the faculty and the Bethel University Board of Trustees, I am very pleased to confer upon you, respectively, the degrees Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Bachelor of Music, and Bachelor of Music Education with all the rights and responsibilities of the degree. You may now move your tassel on your cap from the right to left, signifying you are the proud holder of a bachelor's degree. Congratulations.
You may now be seated. I now invite all the graduates to come to the platform to receive their diploma as the marshals direct you. Nicholas William Christensen. <laughs> Dylan Lee Delasky. <laughs> Mason Jean Doherty. Elise Marie Klanderud. <laughs> Greta Agnes Klinga. <laughs> Ashton Alexander Perupski. Elizabeth Catherine Peterson. Yeah. Addison Grace Stern. Christian Andrew Williams. Ariana Elizabeth Simbura. Josiah John Alquist. Madeline Michelle Demotz. Anna Elizabeth Goldstrand. Savannah Grace Heron. Joy Sela Hami. Davis James McElmurray. <laughs> Greta Lillian Nathy. <laughs> Anna Kaylin Pruitt. <laughs> Kaden Chad Richards. Toby James Ryberg. <laughs> Joshua Caleb Vanna. <laughs> Hunter Jack Bauer. Emma Janelle Booth. <laughs> Annalise Christine Fredrickson. <laughs> Christian Thomas Hamry. <laughs> Hunter Daniel Hansen. Michael Kevalowski. <laughs> Michael Raymond Lee. Yeah. Yeah. 
Sarah Rachel Lewis. Molly J. Oppoven. Lily Elizabeth Owen. Trevor James Rankin. Madeline Elizabeth Stites. Anna Elizabeth Bronner. Audra Colette Carlson. Giovanna Alexandra Contreras. Madeline Christine Edwards. Carissa Ann Falkenberg. Amira Graff. Asha Graff. Emma Jean Hammond. Peter James Krakovic. Bryn Sharice Lee. Brooke Marie Lawrenson. Carter Kenneth Ralph Nelson. Alexis Jamie Patterson. Kaylee Rayal Pearson. Grace Turner Poost. Lauren Alexandra Richards. Ellie Page Seberg. Emma Irene Stoddard. Anna Noel Telke. Abigail Grace Wurches. Lily Elizabeth Yegi. Lydia Claire Offit. Lorena Sophia Allison Rodriguez. Hallie Elizabeth Beckerman. Hannah Marie Bierbrauer. Trinity Aldine Batruff. <laughs> Emma Margaret Cherry. <laughs> Amelia Ann Eveland.
Paige Jaden Hochstetter. Sydney Nicole Holloway Riggs. Adeline Rose Jamison. Tegan Elizabeth Johnson. Allie Renee Johnson. Olivia Marie Laluzerne. Catherine Christy Mendike. Rachel Louise Muir. Lauren Marie Stacy Stearns. Elise Ellen Torberg. Krista Marie Vanderscaff. Grace Evelyn Veenstra. Caitlin Elizabeth Renschler. George Richard Bolt. Dakota Burton. Andrew Mark Stiff. Jarrett Camerata. Duncan Emerson Harrow. Abigail Jane, Abigail Janae Williams. Caitlin Olivia Lallimont. Ariana Brooke Monska. <laughs> Carrie Jean Olinger. <laughs> Avery Elizabeth Schlegel. <laughs> Liam Andrew Adams. Catherine Jewel Nevins. <laughs> Ashley Brianne Sugimoto. Let's celebrate the class of 2023 one more time. What fun was that? <laughs> Distinguished guests, faculty, staff, and most importantly, the now graduated class of 2023. Woo! 
It is with great joy and gratitude we gather to celebrate this amazing occasion. You are an exceptional class of students, demonstrated deep commitment, overcome hard things, endured a global pandemic, experienced personal and collective moments of both joy and sorrow, and here you are. Graduation is a significant milestone in your life, and you deserve to feel proud of your achievements. We extend a heartfelt congratulations to all of you. Well done. Soon the pace and flurry of this campus will slow down, summer will arrive, and you will depart. And this is certainly bittersweet. One of the ways in which summer has been evidenced at my house is by the arrival of our honeybees. Our family has two hives in our backyard, and unfortunately, our bees did not survive the winter. Can you blame them? We did not survive. We barely survived. However, did you know you can order bees? It's true. We ordered four pounds of bees, which came by truck just a few weeks ago, all the way from Texas. In case you're curious, four pounds of bees equals roughly 16,000 bees. I won't go into details regarding what it feels like to have 16,000 bees safely contained in your car, but let's just say it can feel equally unsettling and exciting. Why am I telling you this? Because as we have been transitioning these bees, I've been pondering and discovering that you have a lot more in common with these little creatures than you might initially think. Let's explore some things we can learn from these tiny insects. First, our bees have been in the midst of a season of liminality. Liminality refers to the state of being on a threshold between two stages or conditions, and it is characterized by a temporary state of ambiguity. It represents a limbo-like phase where individuals or groups are neither fully part of their previous state nor fully integrated into the new one. Isn't that a bit like you right now? You are on a threshold between your lived experiences at Bethel and whatever may lie ahead. So be gracious and kind to yourself in this betwixt and between. Second, making the transition from Texas to Minnesota was certainly disorienting for the bees. Similarly, this liminal space may be disorienting for you. You may feel like you're not sure what happens next, what next will feel like, how you will orient yourself to your next. However, it's time to embrace uncertainty. The bees are now exploring new territory, discovering treasures that did not exist in Texas. Similarly, this liminal space provides you an opportunity to explore various paths, possibilities, and potential directions for your future. Embracing uncertainty and being willing to step into the unknown can lead to unexpected growth and opportunities. You don't need to know it all right now. You just need to know how to do the next right thing. Third, bees do not do it alone. There is an interconnectedness and interdependence within their community. They need each other, just like we need each other. Our well-being is based on these connections. Therefore, don't forget to ask for help Surround yourself with supportive individuals who inspire and challenge you and depend on each other. And ultimately, acknowledge that our sovereign Lord, Jesus Christ, will not leave you. Even on your loneliest day, he is with you. And it is through him that we can have hope for our future. May you deeply know that you are loved, seen, beloved, equipped for good, designed for goodness, no matter where you go or how far you travel, you will never be alone. Fourth, honeybees are diligent and persevere. We may quickly and mindlessly indulge in the sweet reward of honey that bees produce, but how often do you actually consider how much effort it took for them to create this for us? So I encourage you to appreciate the process behind the rewards and remember to take time before, it may take time before you see the results. Embrace the process and persevere. 
Next, each bee plays a specific role. There are a variety of roles that bees play within the colony. There are worker bees, nurse bees, there are forager bees, wax builders, undertakers, and guards. The hive could not thrive without each bee playing its distinctive role. Therefore, embrace your strengths. Resist comparing your role to others. There is only one version of you, and you have something unique to offer. What are you bringing forth into this mad and beautiful world? What gifts are waiting to be received from you? Finally, bees embrace their surroundings. Honeybees leave their hive and explore. They do a waggle dance. They look for beauty. They find flowers even in the most unexpected of places and seek the sweetest part of the plant, even if it is a weed. Therefore, graduates, just like the bees, be curious, play, breathe, spend time in nature, and work to find the good amidst the hard places. The next time you see a honeybee, instead of being afraid, maybe you could be reminded of what you might be able to learn from them. So go out, welcome the unknown, find your team, work hard, know your strengths, and use them for God's glory. Go do, find good wherever you are and enjoy the sweet reward. Welcome to the next chapter of your life, graduates. Here's to doing the next right thing. You may fall before you fly, but I'm certain at some point you will soar. The world is waiting. I invite you to stand for our closing prayer and benediction. And please remain standing for the recessional until the graduates have all been dismissed. Loving, gracious, and merciful God, as we gather together on this momentous occasion, our hearts are filled with gratitude and reverence. We thank you, Lord, for this collective journey and personal journeys you have carefully knit that have brought us to this point. We thank you for the lived experiences that have shaped us as individuals and as a community. Lord, we lift up these graduates before you. We thank you for their diligence, perseverance, and the unique gifts you have given to each of them. May you grant them wisdom and discernment as they clarify their next steps and grant them courage to follow the path you have laid before them. Continue to fill their hearts with passion and purpose as they seek to make a positive impact in their communities and the world around them. Help them to remain anchored in your word, knowing that your plans for them are good and filled with hope. Father God, help them remain steadfast in times of uncertainty, trusting in your providence and your faithfulness. May the wounds of their past be transformed into wellsprings of wisdom and strength through your spirit. Gradual, graduates, may you continually embrace God's tender grace and bring healing to places of pain, restoration in areas of loss, and renewals in parts of you that may feel broken and weary. May your life be a testament of the transformative power of God's presence within you. Lord, we pray these graduates will be instruments of your peace, justice, and reconciliation in the world, bringing hope, healing, as they serve with the spirit of your love. Gracious God, we draw strength each day from the promise that you are always before us, behind us, beside us, and beneath us. May our lives be a testament to your glory, reflecting your love, mercy, and compassion to all those around you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. And now, Bethel University, Class of 2022, we celebrate your excellent work. We thank your families who have all supported you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>